You may remember that a long time ago, in fact, a year ago to this very exact day, I made a countdown video showing you my 5 favourite pieces of video game music. Here's a link if you haven't seen it. And in that video, I alluded that this list wouldn't stay the same forever. But you see, over the years, this list has changed countless numbers of times due to me experiencing new games all the time. But this isn't necessarily a bad thing. And in the time since that countdown video, I found another 5 new pieces of video game music that have really tickled my fancy. Now spoilers may be present here if you haven't played any of the games I'm going to mention, so just a heads up for that. Otherwise, the same rules apply here, it's only one track per franchise, and please note that these are strictly my own opinions based solely on the games I've played first hand, or have enough working knowledge of to be able to constructively talk about them. And with the formalities out of the way, here are another 5 of my favourite game music tracks of all time. Has my channel really existed for a year and a few months now, and not once in that time have I talked about a fighting game? Note to self, chastise myself to cleanse my soul of sin later. But seriously, I'm ashamed that it's taken me this long to talk about such games, because the Tekken series is one of my favourite game franchises out there in general, let alone it being my favourite fighting game franchise. And you only need to look at my bedroom shelf for evidence to this. The most recent in the series, Tekken Tag Tournament 2, is where we'll find number 5 on our countdown. I'm not counting Revolution here because ugh. every single one of the stages you can duke it out in is vibrant and lively and the music tracks for each are written as such and complement them outstandingly. And I think this one does it best. You see what's around you in this stage, the Odium of Illusions. There's a magician performing spectacular magic tricks on stage, sending women in lovely dresses flying around the auditorium with all of its exquisite decor and show, wowing the crowd in the backdrop, and then you realise how well this music works with it. Just listen to how upbeat it is! I bet every single member of the brass section had an absolute ball whilst playing this. I love this track as well because unlike most of the other completely electronic pieces in Triple T2, it has a very nice melody that sounds so befitting to the absolute wonderment of seeing such magic and majestic scenery. And while you're most likely concentrating on beating the shit out of a panda bear with rocket propelled limbs, you can't help but start bouncing along yourself to the infectious rhythm and lively instruments. Because of this piece of music, this fantastic theatre is truly a fantastic place to fight. This is the game where legends are born! Well, it says so in the title, so I kind of expect that to be the case. Awkward segue at Rayman Legends! I'm gonna let you into a little secret. Rayman's one of my favorite IPs ever! And I am in absolute admiration of Legends, not just for the fact that it stars the Man of Ray, because even without him, the game would still have been hands down one of the freshest and most enjoyable platformers to grace the land. For most people, the game truly shines through its gameplay, but as for me, I find everything in Rayman Legends to be sublime. Take its lovely array of environments, for example. They're lovely to run through, they're lovely to behold, and as it turns out, they're lovely to listen to as well. Each world utilizes its thematic material as inspiration for the sounds you hear in the music, but Numero Cuatro is a track from this game that on top of its great instrumentation just exhumes menace as well as gallantry and it's just dang good to listen to. What you're listening to here is the theme for the Olympus Maximus world's boss fight against an amorphous shadowy essence simply known as Hades Hand. And during this fight you have to put up with hearing those demonic swelling strings and the texture of the music constantly ballooning and fading away with the triplet melodies causing a little bit of uneasiness. But you beat the baddie for the first time and you think you're home and dry but then huge drumming patterns throw you back into tension as you try to ascend the deadly path ahead of you. And then the shadows are back with a vengeance and the music is sure to let you know that things are about to get tasty. 
new and tasty. <laughs> And it does it all over again when that threat is dealt with. And by the time the third and final form approaches, you're still scared, but yet so near the end, which is why the music becomes ever so slightly brighter and heroic. It wills you on to keep battling, and it's told a very nice story along the way. That dynamic aspect of this music is something I highly commend, and all in all, it really works here. Here we have Dust, an Elysian Tale, and this was one of the most surprising games that I played in 2013. I have no shame in owning two copies of it if it means more sales profit for the maker of this surprisingly good game. And maker is a singular word here, because the game was all drawn up and put together by one bloke. Animator Dean Dodrell over three long and gruelling years. And it turned out great I must say, I'd even go as far to say that Dust is a highly underlooked piece of work thanks to its tight combat and bite the back of your hand stunning presentation. But we're here for the music and we have some great stuff on offer here from the studio behind Dust's audio, Hyperduck Soundworks. Every piece of music written for Dust is worthy of immense praise, but number three goes to this. The second that this music starts, you can just tell that all the elements that should make a great final boss theme are present and accounted for. You have the full-bodied choir, the booming bass percussion, you have the forceful brass chords, and you also have the strings working their magic underneath everything. It's all clearly been considered here, and the way that Hyperduck bring it all together through the melodies and themes they've written, and the excellent mixing job they've done, work absolute wonders. The bass percussion is always there on that driving straight on-beat rhythm, never missing a beat and sounding really really, really militant, and goosebumps are quick to follow after I hear the simply amazing harmonies and chord movements. All things considered here, this piece of music is a perfect backdrop for this grand conclusion to a journey filled with hardships and adventure. Now get out there and play this game, it deserves to be enjoyed by so many more of you. Next up is a game that holds the unique privilege of being the first ever JRPG I've played. And thank goodness it was this one, because I feel like if I had picked any one of the newer Final Fantasy titles instead of this, I probably wouldn't have coped. I'm still a very long way from completing Bravely Default at the time of making this video. I mean, I've not even reached the fabled and dreaded Chapter 5 onwards yet. But I've already had plenty of experience with its awesome flagship combat system, its impressive visual fidelity, and its superb music courtesy of Revo and the Linked Horizon project, the same group behind Every time you encounter one of the game's major bosses, the hype and tension just skyrocket as you get treated to this stellar soundtrack and number two on this countdown. You ready for it? I remember first hearing this and immediately thinking, why is this not final boss music? Because its energy, its instrumentation and its great sense of progression should make this worthy of a game's final climactic tussle. But instead, it's merely used as a backing for each of the battles with the asterisk bearers. But it's still really bloody good. I mentioned in my Bravely Default Rapid Ramble video that a certain track from this game's music was a contender for being one of my new favourite pieces of video game music. And this is that exact track. I love its combination of overdriven guitars licking out those super solos and the violin being worked to death as both instruments share the melody line. The piece's strong influences from neoclassicism and symphonic metal pioneered by artists such as Yngwie Malmsteen really shine through in its chord progressions and choice of instruments. I simply can't help but be excited and pumped up whenever this music comes along and even though all you're doing is simply giving your commands out to your four heroes, the battle feels much more active than what is shown on screen thanks to this awesome track. Now trimming this list down to only 5 tracks was a struggle in itself because loads of other tracks were worthy of the top 5, and it's only fair that those tracks who narrowly missed out get their time in the spotlight. With that said, here is the one that almost made it. 
Now let's talk about acapella. I'm willing to bet that the only reason some of you even know what acapella is will be because of this guy pushing it to new heights by arranging video game music into acapella. And I really like it too, don't get me wrong, but there aren't many examples of video games out there that embrace this genre of music. That is, of course, except for Crash Twin Sanity, where the entirety of the soundtrack is acapella music, specifically performed by a group called Spiral Mouth, who also works on other Crash Bandicoot projects. And while the actual games may have spiralled into mediocrity and failed ideas, I will always commend the pioneering work done to create these games as music, and this track in particular has to be my favourite. Okay, time to come clean here. I actually mistook the opening sounds there as actual real instrumental sounds, but they are still human vocal sounds made to sound like they come from a musical instrument rather than the human mouth. And that is just a great testament to the editing job applied to the vocals. I'm not sure I can point out what exactly went into making the voices sound as they are, maybe lots of distortion and plenty of reverb as a rough guess, but they work wonders in making these vocals sound a lot like electric guitars and so on. When you can fool someone into thinking a sound in a piece of music is something that it's not, you must have done a pretty convincing job making it sound that way, and that's why I'm in love with this a cappella theme, because it's far more besides. Now, prepare your body, my dear viewer, for I can at last reveal my number one pick. Yes, indeed! I get to talk about Metal Gear Rising! And I'm just going to ignore the R word at the end there, because it's a stupid word. I first tried out this on PC a year after its original console released, and despite me having very little experience in Metal Gear entries beforehand, I had very little trouble coming to enjoy this game. The plot had a fantastic Saturday morning cartoon vibe to it, the gameplay was fun and had me going through some utterly bonkers sequences. I have just suplexed a Metal Gear. What the fuck? And I had a blast listening to the massively energetic musical backing to every moment in the entire game. What most people remember about Metal Gear Rising soundtrack, however, will be the themes that play during one of the story's hectic and beautifully cinematic boss fights. And they certainly can't be blamed for that because I think they're the highlight of the entire soundtrack as well. And for number one on this countdown, it quite simply has to be a track that inspires the very best out of you as the player and urges you to take on these colossal challenges and tackle the seemingly impossible. Clearly, it has to be psych! Got you all! I've actually picked the one before this. The funny thing about placing a track from this particular game, and of this particular heavily electronic genre, is that normally, I'm not really one to voraciously enjoy such types of music. I like my music organic, I like nice melodies and properly orchestrated work. There are very few instances where I will find a piece of music featuring such synthesizing digital material enjoyable to listen to, but in a game that's set in the near future with people who can magnetically separate their body parts, I guess the soundtrack sort of cries out for such a musical style, and in this case, I absolutely fucking adore it! While others may prefer it has to be this way, I think that Collective Consciousness is a superior piece of music. Played during your showdown with the colossal MG Excelsis, you immediately get pelted with these hard-hitting percussion and strings, mixed in with all the wah wahs and the wub wubs and the wiggy wiggies and the dub dubs and what you young whippersnappers call music nowadays! The boss themes also have this thing where vocals and actual song lyrics are used, and the lyrics in this particular track pertain to the country controlling the people who live in ignorance and purchase their happiness. I'm not sure I can explain why I think they work in this situation, maybe because they kind of relate to all the words said by the big bad senator and to his batshit insane ideologies. But going back to the actual music for a second here, you hear these electronic and synthesized sounds and samples thrown about and going in every single direction possible and this adds to the hectic nature of the fight itself. But it also doesn't forget to include those epic string harmonies that raise you up and get you psyched up and ready to deal some damage. Actually, now that I look back on all this, I've probably done a 
really haphazard and disjointed explanation as to why this is number one this time around, but suffice it to say that this absolutely needs to be listened to, and only then I think will people be truly able to say how awesome this music really is. It's hard hitting and it leaves a big impact on you, and listening to it is just such a good time. And this is why Collective Consciousness from Metal Gear Rising is top dog and number one on this countdown of another five of my favourite pieces of video game music. The question is, what's out there in the future that could potentially steal the number one spot? And that is what I will call a wrap. So please, let me know what you thought of these tracks and tell me your personal favourites in the comment section below. There is a lot we can talk about, I'm sure. Apart from all that, that's it for today. All I can say now is stay you and stay awesome and I will see you all later on. And a big super massive hello to you all, thanks again for watching. Be sure to give a like and a favourite if you enjoyed the video, and if you really liked it and you want more, go see a couple of my other recent videos by clicking the links here, and also consider subscribing to The Richardo Show, so you can be among the first to see new content as and when it's ready. Thanks again, and I will see you guys later on.